Coach Brandon here. Today we're we'll covering the basics of creatine usage. To start, just a couple of facts up on the board. Uh, your body produces about one to two grams of creatine daily. 95% of your creatine stores in your body can be found in your skeletal muscle, while the remaining 5% is going to be found in your brain, your liver, your kidney, and even some of your testes. And when it comes to uh, foods that are very creatine rich, you should be looking towards red meat, pork, and then also fish. Now, actually talking about how creatine works, creatine supplementation works by increasing the total amount of saturation you have in your muscles, which betters ATP regeneration during high intensity exercise. Uh, oftentimes, high intensity exercise's biggest limitation is ATP regeneration. So supplementing with a creatine supplement is gonna be a very worthwhile endeavor if you're looking to um, kind of better your energy storage during high intensity exercise. Now, Creatine's already been proven its effectiveness. There's been hundreds, if not thousands of studies that show that it works very, very well at what it does. But the, the part of it that's not studied so much is what is the minimal dose we can take while experiencing the maximal amount of benefits or still getting the benefits we're looking for. To cover that, we're gonna go ahead and look at a study called Effects of Low-Dose Creatine Monohydrate on Muscle Strength and Endurance. This study was about six weeks long. It took three groups of people. One group was a placebo group. Second group was three grams per day. And uh, third group was five grams per day. It's very important to note that most studies out there with creatine kind of already assume that you're doing a loading cycle and most do involve a loading cycle. This study is fairly unique in the way that it doesn't do one. There's no loading cycle. They just take the maintenance level dose from the start and uh, run the six week study. At the end of the six weeks, the only difference between the three groups was the difference between the placebo group and the three gram and the five gram group. The three gram and five gram actually had no differences in benefit. There was just a big difference between three gram, five gram, and placebo, further proving its effectiveness. Now, one of the topics I really wanna get into today is, is a loading cycle needed? What, what benefits does it even have? I'm not gonna necessarily tell you what I personally do. Rather, I just want to, uh, to you guys have a better understanding of what the point of doing a loading cycle is. Now, a loading cycle gets your muscles sat fully saturated with creatine very, very fast. That's one of the main reasons to do it. Instead, if you take a maintenance level dose uh, from the start, after two weeks, your muscles will be fully saturated with creatine. But doing a loading cycle, doing something like 20 grams a day every day for the first five days, and then doing a maintenance level dose after that, which is what most loading cycles look like, uh, for a loading cycle, your muscles are fully saturated in five days rather than two weeks. So the only real difference here is when your muscles are actually going to achieve that full level of saturation. Uh, with loading cycles, it's gonna be five days. With a maintenance dose from the start, it's gonna be about 14. So there absolutely is a benefit to doing a loading cycle. But um, some of the kind of differences of opinion come when we look at the side effects of creatine. Given they are very, very minimal, and most have to do with gastrointestinal distress, but keep in mind that uh, those side effects are typically 95% of the time only found when somebody's doing a creatine loading cycle. When people skip out in the loading cycle and do a maintenance dose from the start, typically no side effects are found. Now to add to that further, um, doing a loading cycle can add an entire another tub or jar or whatever kind of creatine receptacle you have, it can add a lot of price to the total creatine cycle or however long you take it. Now for most people it's not that big a deal because creatine uh, monohydrate is already a fairly cheap supplement, but at the same time, uh, me personally, I'm not a big fan of spending very much on supplements regardless. I'd rather put that money towards the groceries. So if you're looking to cut down the price a little bit, it might be a good idea to just take that maintenance dose from the start and skip out on the loading cycle. Now. Uh, having covered the study and how it actually works, let's go ahead and get to the different kinds of creatine that are out there. There's a lot of different kinds of creatine that claim, that big claims. Pre, uh, creacolin, for example, claims to have better bioavailability, uh, better solubility in water, so on and so forth. But it's very important to note that none of these, or most of these claims, have been proven false or have no real legitimacy to, behind them at all in terms of actual studies. But with those client claims comes a much higher price tag. So when you're looking at the different kinds of creatine out there, what you should take, I personally suggest just a basic creatine monohydrate, tried and true, very well tested to, and works very well. Also the price tag's much, much lower. So that's kind of the one that I personally use and suggest to my clients. 
Next, and the last thing I want to cover when it comes to the basics of creatine is going to be what happens when I don't take it for a few days. Let's say you go out of town on some kind of business trip and you leave your creatine at home. Now, keep in mind, you're not going to lose all the benefit by stopping usage for two to three days. In fact, it takes weeks, if not a full month, for your muscles to become fully desaturated after taking creatine and achieving that full saturation point. So, if you leave the creatine at home, if you forget to take it for a few days, don't sweat it. Um, ideally, you take it every day and very consistent with it, but at the same time, skipping out on taking it for a few days isn't going to have a big effect in the grand scheme of things. The last thing I want to cover this video is just looking towards the future of research in creatine, which is very exciting. Um, some of the research that's being done now shows creatine's benefits to neurological disease and uh, disorders. Uh, traumatic, traumatic brain injuries, and there's also already been a good amount of studies showing its effectiveness for train, uh, traumatic brain injuries on rats and other animals of that nature that do prove its effectiveness. Now, lastly, there's a lot of good uh, studies going into how creatine benefits vegetarians as well. So in my future video on creatine, we'll go ahead and get into the uh, recent studies on that those kinds of areas. I think that's about it for this topic. This is Brandon Morgan signing out.